I'm Tim Taylor, and uh, I received an email this morning from a good friend of mine who was talking about certain projects and assignments we've been working on collaboratively, collaboratively together. And uh, there's been some challenges and frustrations because of how long it seems like it takes for certain, certain things to come about and come forth. And as he asked me certain questions and I responded because part of the context of this is we are both uh, going to be part of a uh, going to a conference that had to do with the launch. And the, uh, in this conference, they used uh, a spaceship launch as, an ex as part of their logo or their images for this uh, conference. And for me, that spoke volumes because God began to speak through a prophet 1995, 1996, uh, where the analogy of a launch was used. And then uh, when God spoke to me about the arcs, the Apostolic Resource Center and the fleet of arcs, he wanted to come forth. Uh, God uh, used the context of the launch of a space shuttle as part of the context of the uh, first eight weeks I did on the uh, revealing the revelation God gave about apostolic resource centers. And then when uh, it came time for the um, official uh, decision where Watchman Ministries transitioned into Kingdom League International and we had the meeting, um, there was, uh, without any planning on our part, the, there was a launch of the space shuttle discovery, and it occurred when our uh, meeting began, and it just so happens it docked with the International Space Station um, within 15 minutes around the time frame when they laid hands upon us and set us in commissioned Kingdom League International. And over the years, as I've looked at and I've contemplated, I've realized uh, something. Uh, I've uh, avoided trying to toot my own horn or anything like that, but I, if I look back and speak honestly, and just communicate what God's done, I can honestly say everything prophetically the Lord's ever showed me or given me, there's not one word that's ever fallen to the ground. Thus far, he has fulfilled so many things that he said. Now, there are some things that have not occurred yet, but I'm looking back and marveling. And so what I was prompted to do this morning was go back and review some things that we did more than a decade ago. And the goal was God's been trying to communicate and prepare the way for a long time. And we're just one, I'm just one of many voices God's been using to do this. And uh, so I went back and I pulled up some old images and old PowerPoints from more than 10 years ago from the launch. It's, in fact, we did a conference right after the launch of KLI called um, Are You Prepared? And um, this is part of the image of that. We went over uh, the image of what KLI was all about and our call. And we, the focus was on the ecclesia. We were talking about the work overseas, all the different things God used, the strategy to mobilize the body of Christ to do. And uh, I mean, my goodness, by 2012, we had uh, reported over 34 houses of prayer that were launched. And from those houses of prayer, more than 40 plus churches were reported as being launched from there as well. And again, that was... 10 years ago. Um, anyway, um, this is just some of the work that was around the world. But I want to emphasize here, back then, God was emphasizing to us our call, how he called us as kings and priests. There's a role each one plays. And so as I go back and contemplate, we had, at that time, I had Brenda was sharing about map your neighborhood. And here's my point. There's a practical proclamation, declaration, a warning coming forth, a prophetic proclamation about what is to occur. But then what we do, the way we're wired is our, our call, Brenda's and my call has always been to clear and prepare. So we're always looking for ways. How do we put our faith into action with wisdom? How do we act upon what God is showing us? And so within our limited scope, within our limited abilities, we've always tried to put our faith in action. And this was one of our first forays into being prepared. And so there were certain things that we used to reach out to our neighborhood as the body of Christ, as the church began to serve our neighborhood. And we used some tools our taxpayer dollars paid for. But we were the impetus to reach out to our neighbors to begin to facilitate that community relationship. At the same time, besides that, um, let's see here. 
I also had John Anderson, who's still part of with us today. We're still part of him, we're collaborating together. And John was speaking into business continuity planning and talking about how businesses were to prepare for disasters and things like that. And I also had other business people come in and be able to speak about real estate and various other spheres of society to prepare us for the challenging times that are occurring, which back then, you know, well, let's just say this. It seems like there are more things, that, and things are more relevant now than they were then. <laughs> things have transpired because part of the context was God showed us the difference between the nonprofit and the 508C1. He showed us the difference between the nonprofit and the church, the ecclesia. There was a revelation of the ecclesia even then. Now, today, everyone's using the term ecclesia. But for us, we were one of the first ones to pro proclaim that. And so we're going back, we're going back on it. We're going, it says we're on the crest of a kingdom move. And right now, everyone's talking about the wave of God and being positioned on the wave to catch the wave and stuff. We were talking about that more than a decade ago. And I shared about the revelation of Yahweh Sabaoth, the Lord of the host, and how Connect, ORT, One Church, One Day, and the League all played into this. And the uh, unfolding revelation that we've continued to build upon and about how there's going to be the restoration of arts, apostolic resource centers. And uh, anyway, uh, and that led to our motto. We are all for one King Jesus and will be one for all. The church, the ecclesia, the called out ones. And God's calling his people out. He's calling you and I out of the four walls of the church to be the church representing uh, Christ to this world. God doesn't, the church is not a building. It's a people that go forth to, re, to express his character, his will, his way, and his power, his truth. And unfortunately, we've had too many that have been hidden at this time. Anyway, that was the time we were preparing for. And we foresaw these issues that were coming up. We foresaw the wisdom. God gave tremendous wisdom when he showed us how to do this because that's one of the keys to establishing God's government in the gates. Because right now, we are watching civil government because of moral failure and lack of character, deception, evil, wickedness, corruption is just absolutely falling apart and destroying. And what happens when those things begin to uh, fall you know i teach in there's four different kinds of government personal family church and then civil government when civil government begins, begins to fail it, it goes next down to the next level of government to step up to provide order protection and everything like that and i submit to you my friends this the stage is being set for the ecclesia to come forth to begin to establish government and we do that the way we express that is through the one church one day strategy of forming councils and the gates we use that to begin to connect and mobilize the body of christ the army of the lord and then discover who are the apostolic prophetic gifted leaders that God's put within each community, within each sphere. What are they called to do? We begin to reach out and discover. There's a principle and a way to do that. But God's given us these words, these principles, these truths to prepare God's people for this time. He's given us a governmental structure to prepare people for this time. He's given us a heart and attitude and insight. In fact, you'll find in this presentation here, this is again more than 11 years ago, we talked about the aircraft carrier task force, about how these arts were likened unto that and how it's a team of teams collaborating together and it's about force projection it's about establishing uh the, you know it talks about the gates of hell would not pre prevail against the church you see the gates are stationary they're not going to move god intends his church to be on the move he does not intend us to be retreating he intends us to be going forward that also communicates god's looking for a people with courage and a backbone today um i just cannot overemphasize the need for how we do this is just as important as what we do and it takes a certain kingdom minded people to rise up to embrace this time to not step back in fear but to go forward and embrace the truth and so we've been preparing for this whole time and god showed us a blueprint for this time and about the revelation of league being an important element of covenant. And so from this uh, PowerPoint, I'm just rolling through some things because, again, these are common themes that we've been on, working on all this time. And it's for such a time as this we've been brought forth. Uh, I had a, a very well-known, prominent apostolic leader who years ago told me, he says, I advise you, you ought to find something to preach on, teach on that would be more profitable for you because the season is not yet because people aren't prepared for the message that you're bringing. Well, my friends, now that message is, is clear. I told him then, 
then, and I'll tell you now, I said, if I don't pursue trying to walk these things out and pioneer this then, then who will be prepared when the time comes then? And that's where we are. We are now at then. It's now time for this to come forth. And that's what we've been working on. I'm saying this partially for our ministers, because my friends, this hasn't been a flash in the pan. It's not been something we've been haphazard about. We've been stewarding an assignment of vision and prophetic word all this time. And my friends, it's for such a time as this, you and I have been brought to the kingdom. Some have come today and have got a new revelation about the role of house churches. They're beginning to hear more prophetic words talk about that role. Well, we saw that back then. In fact, ORT, One Church, One Day Connect was made. It foresaw how house churches would be such an incredible, important element of what Christ is doing in this time. We talked about how they would collaborate together to build this house of prayer. And that canopy of prayer, that that roof, if you will, would be provided by the church to oversee, to, to protect, to shield, to go, to watch over those kingdom-minded people in the church mountain, business mountain, government, media, education, healthcare, the family mountains, to begin to launch forth, to see transmission come forth. And as we do that, as we make disciples, our Father's house of prayer would be built in addition to that. His house would be a glorious house, the house of David would be restored. And on and on I could go about that. But suffice to say, we saw it then, we presented it then, and it's unfolding today. And we have long-term fruit that's being uh, shown forth in a variety of communities. But I wanted to show you that to encourage you and just to remind you that we have been on this assignment a long time. And the one thing I can tell you is my father's word is true. His word does not return void, but it goes forth to accomplish all that he's seen it to do. But to do that, he needs a people who are found faithful and prepared, meet for the master's use. Therefore, I strongly urge you and I encourage you. If you've been faithful, then you will qualify for being faithful in much. I know myself, I want to be prepared to hear, well done, you good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. And how to do being faithful, just like Joe Joseph was faithful. We saw God take him. His family put him in the pit. The people he tried to serve and do righteous by put him in prison. But God's plan was to put him into the palace. Why? Not for his benefit, not but for his destiny and for the saving of a nation. For the, in fact, the saving of nations. And so, my friends, I submit to you: for such a time as this, you and I have been brought forth. God's looking for a people of love and courage. A people of of courage that is based upon the love of God that will move forth in the fierceness of that love and the anointing of the Lord because there's a people that come forth that says in Joel chapter 2 of like whom it says the world has never seen nor will there ever be such after them. It says a fire burns before them behind them a flame uh, burns and I would submit to you the fire that burns before them is the love of God and the fire that comes behind them is the anointing of God. Faith works by love and also wisdom comes by that same love too but it's an anointing that comes with it. There's a fire and there's a power that comes. And I want to thank you, Lord, for the people you're raising up right now. I want to pray for those that are part of Kingdom League International, everyone who is a member of that, is part of the family or the tribe or a fellow worker. I want to pray a blessing upon them. I pray for an encouragement. And for all our other co-laborers in Christ, because we are not the only ones. There are many around the world that have seen and heard very similar things. They've been preparing too. And I pray that they would be prepared, that we would all be prepared to hit the mark for the assignment you've given at this, at this time. That Jesus, your name might be glorified, your name might be magnified, your church might be uh, built, and your kingdom might be presented in character, in love, and in power. And I pray y'all have a very blessed day in Jesus' name.